In this video, we'll be making our coconut milk and hemp seed oil liquid soap crafted to be a fine, natural shampoo. We'll be using the following 12 ingredients for this recipe with an emphasis on hemp oil as the cardinal ingredient for the liquid soap. And we'll be adding a little bit of a luxury of coconut milk. Now you'll need the following ingredients, hemp seed oil, castor oil, lanolin wax, olive oil, coconut oil, distilled water, coconut milk, lye, and in this case we're using potassium hydroxide, glycerin, your fragrance, and in our recipe today we're using cool coconut fragrance oil, steric acid, and the preservative we'll use will be optifin. Now for those of you who are already members at thermomermaid.com, you can find this full recipe ready to print with the step-by-step -step instructions listed under coconut milk and hemp oil shampoo along with the members version of this video. To find it, go to your members dashboard, scroll down to the recipe directory, and then click on the category that says hemp oil. Then go over to the coconut milk and hemp seed oil shampoo and it's ready to print right there. Now also, I'll be adding a new shampoo category to help find these recipes easier, so keep your eye out for that as well. Now, if you haven't signed up at Thermo Mermaid, the membership is available to you at the link to the learning library down below this video. So come on over and check that out to discover more information. So let's get ready to start this project and follow along with me. So while I make the lye water solution to saponify our oils, let's talk about what kind of shampoo this is. Now first, hemp seed oil is high in oleic acid, which is very similar to olive oil. The difference is, is that hemp oil, it's a darker green, it has a grittier, earthier smell to it. And like olive oil, it's a rich, heavy oil. But also like olive oil, it actually has a drying effect. Now, shampoos in general tend to have a lot more additives for things like hair softening, for lather, and coating for volume. But in this formula, we're going to keep the recipe simple. What we're going to get is a liquid soap with a nice light lather and a real solid cleansing effect. So essentially, this is going to strip heavy oils and buildup from your hair. Now, I used this formula for 30 days, and it completely controlled the buildup from other daily products. So I compare this to that original Neutrogena formula that you would use to get rid of the buildup from other hair products. The texture and the feel in the final product is very similar to this soap as compared to the original Neutrogena. And just like with that Neutrogena formula, after a few weeks, you want to change it up to have something that provides you with sort of a softer texture. So if you're looking for a recipe specifically for oily hair, this is a good combination of oils to use with, remember, our primary oils being olive and hemp seed oil. Once everything's melted, I'm going to add in the lye water solution that we made a little while ago. Now you don't need to wait for the lye water to cool to room temperature because the oils are much warmer than that. But you do want to try to make sure that the lye water and the oils are just about within 20 degrees of each other. And this will keep the recipe nice and calm. So blend this down until it's completely emulsified. And we're going to let this cook through all the hot process stages until it's completely gelled and it turns into a nice glassy paste. So take all the time you need mixing this together. There's no rush at this point. Something you'll notice in our liquid shampoo base here is that this is much less soap batter than if we were making a regular three pound recipe of hot process soap. So this is gonna cook down into a thick heavy paste that will need to be diluted. So there's going to be plenty more water added later on in the process. So we don't wanna put in too much soap into the crock pot because then we'll end up not being able to dilute it down. So we'll just let this sit and we'll come back to it in about 30 minutes. Since we don't have as much soap in this crock pot, keep in mind it may cook faster for you, so you'll want to check it more frequently, and you also may notice that it moves into a gel phase quicker. Here, after 30 minutes, we're already well into the second stage where the soap is full of fluffy air pockets, and it'll need to be stirred back together. So once we're finished with that, we'll cook this for another hour. After about an hour, you can see that the gel phase has set in. This looks about 90% of the way there, and this is starting to turn into a nice tough paste. It almost has a rubber cement texture when the paste is fully cooked. And just like with any of your liquid soap recipes, to get an idea if it's finished cooking, you can give it a clarity test. So let's just give this a few more minutes and we'll come back for that in a bit. 
and while we wait, we'll prepare the solution that will dilute the soap into a liquid shampoo. Here, I'm adding 3 ounces of glycerin and 2 ounces of coconut milk into 12 ounces of distilled water. Now this coconut milk was thick with guar and I don't usually worry about which brand or how thick the milk is. When you open the can, just mix it well together and measure out 2 ounces. It may be thin milk, it may be heavy. Today mine was a heavy cream texture, but this will all thin out as the shampoo cooks. Now remember, this is only one of a dozen shampoo formulas that I have for various hair types. If you'd like to see the other shampoos being made from scratch, you can give me feedback by hitting the thumbs up button. Now let's pop back over and try the clarity test now. I have a few ounces of distilled water here, and I'm going to just take a bit of soap paste on the end of my spoon and dissolve this down into the water. If the water turns milky white, then our soap has not finished cooking yet. But if it stays clear, then we know we're ready to move on to the next step. Now this doesn't look too bad, but it turns out to be a little bit cloudy, so I'm just going to let this soap cook for another 15 minutes, and then we'll try this test again. On the second test, we're almost there. I've dissolved even more soap into the water, and you can see through the bottom. It's a little better, but here there's still no rush, so we can take our time moving through the next steps. Once I'm satisfied that this paste has fully gelled, it's time to turn the crock pot onto warm, not just low, but warm. We don't want to cook this anymore. And then we'll add the glycerin and milk solution and start to break this paste down. Now, right here, this isn't enough water to get the soap into a stable liquid, but right now we're just going to gently break this down using a spoon and the warm water to loosen the paste. Now you can take all the time that you need doing this. You can just break it up and come back to it later, or you can work it down in one session. It's entirely up to you. What I like to do is break it down slowly because then I can keep everything under control in a gentle fashion. Now if you do choose to let this sit, one tip is to cover the top with saran wrap before placing the lid over the top. This will prevent the water from evaporating while the crock pot sits on warm over the next few hours. I'm going to let the paste dilute and then come back to see where the texture is. After a few hours, it doesn't seem that much has happened. The water that's in the crock pot is only going to dilute so much of the paste. So as the soap settles, the paste won't continue to break down if there isn't enough water to do the job. So to get this ratio just perfect, we're going to add water 12 ounces at a time, and then dilute that as far as it will go, and then repeat this if needed, and then we'll continue to do this until we have a perfectly smooth golden liquid. Now, one additional tip in this formula, shampoos for oily hair, or shampoos that strip buildup from your hair, sometimes tend to leave your hair feeling a little bit more tangly than a rich moisturizing shampoo will. So if you have really long hair like I do, and you feel like this does that, then what you can do is remove the lanolin wax from the recipe and replace that with a shea butter, or even better, an aloe butter. Now, I love putting lanolin in my formulas. It's probably my favorite secret ingredient. But lanolin in shampoo does have a bit of a waxy texture, so if you do feel like that's one of the elements that you want to control, you want to look to replace the lanolin. And don't forget, if you have any questions about this recipe or you want to join the discussion on tweaking this formula, you can post any questions over in the Thermal Mermaid forums. This is open for everyone to browse, so if you aren't a member, you can still find resources on this shampoo posted in the forum message boards. The link to that is below this video. Once I've spent some time gently breaking this up, I'm going to put the cover back on the top and then let the warm water do the rest of the work. Now when I come back, you can see how this transformation is moving along. After another hour, our liquid soap is almost dissolved, but you can see a thick, rubbery skin floating on the surface. Now this is all perfectly gelled soap paste, and this is the last of what needs to be diluted. So I'm going to break this up a little bit, but the only thing that'll get this into a liquid is to continue to add another 12 ounces of water and then let it dilute some more.
Now you can see when I return a little while later, the liquid is a clean golden soap. No more skin and no more soap paste floating on the top. This is completely diluted and overall we ended up using 42 ounces of water in the total recipe. Now we can add our final ingredients and here I'll add in the preservative. In this case we're using a half ounce of Optifin and then we'll add the fragrance. And then once we've got this in, we'll blend this down with the stick blender to make sure that it's completely incorporated. Remember here our soap is not too hot. We've just got it set on warm, but the, to protect your preservative and your fragrance, we're adding it into the very final stage of the soap process. Now, if you were to walk away from this right now and leave it on warm, the water in here will begin to evaporate a little bit and you'll start to see that skin gel over again. Now, if this happens to you, what you'll do is you'll need to add a little bit more water and then just let it continue to dilute again. The exact amount of water will end up varying a little bit and in some batches you can get a little bit extra while others will always be exact. If you want this to turn out exact every time, then I recommend moving along with the recipe as it's diluting and don't leave it sitting in the crock pot for long hours or even overnight. Now if you're making this for personal use, it's not going to affect the quality of your soap if that's the way you want to make it. If you just want to take your time and let it gently just dilute, just dilute away on its own. It's, this is just a little extra tip if you just want to make sure that the measurements come out the same every time. You can control that measurement by gently controlling the rate of evaporation and making sure that you keep your evaporation to a minimum. And the very final ingredient that we're adding is a tablespoon of melted stearic acid. Once this soap cools and it's in the bottle, it certainly is a liquid. The stearic acid will thicken it just a little and give you that shampoo texture so that it won't pour out of the bottle too quickly when you tip it over. Now all we have left to do is pour and label our shampoo. Now this recipe that we've made today will give you four bottles that weigh 14 ounces a piece. The bottles I'm using here are called Boston bottles and they usually are sold as 12 ounce bottles but my shampoo measures out at 14 ounces when I fill the bottle. You can fill your product to the size or weight of your liking. But make sure your bottles are sanitized. You can do this by soaking them in warm soapy water along with the caps and then just make sure that they're completely dry before you go in and package your product. Or you can also spritz them down in rubbing alcohol. Make sure you get the lips and the insides of the caps as well. Now coming up, there will be a matching conditioner for this shampoo. The conditioner to match this is going to be a lightweight hair repair conditioner. So make sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to see how we match our conditioners to our shampoos and what will go into that formula. Now you'll have to hit the notification button to get that update. And don't forget, join us over at Thermal Mermaid for the hundreds of other bath recipes that are ready to print and make today. Now, if you want a label for your bottle, you can use the three by five inch labels. These fit nicely. And I do recommend using a waterproof label because these bottles will go in the shower. And if you don't use the waterproof labels, they'll only last a few seconds before the ink washes away. So even if you have your labels professionally printed, you still will want to have these on waterproof paper. Now, I hope you enjoyed this episode while we made our coconut milk and hemp seed oil shampoo. If you stay tuned, we'll have the second part, which will include the conditioner coming right up. And if you'd like, come on over to thermalmermaid.com and join us for the discussions. <laughs>